Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fuji's Blitz and today we're going to get a quick look at the Bosch 155, the French Tier XTD. OP or not OP? Well that's the question. Oh that's what the beastie looks like when you look at it in the armour inspector and yeah it's basically a very long flat TD with a big gun. And since it's at its upgraded gun, basically the one with the burst damage, a lot of people have said it's OP. So as you can see here, it's got relatively good HP, it's got great DPM, especially on its premium ammunition, the heat, it's got the best in its class and tier. Penetration across all shells isn't too shabby either. Damage, well, you're going to knock out about 560 alpha on your AP per shell, but if you stick in the top tier 10 gun, which is basically the double shell autoloader, you'll get the burst damage of around 1100, which is pretty big. Rate of fire, well it's actually not too bad for an autoloader, with just shy of 6 seconds per shell and just shy of 13 and a half seconds for the entire magazine, which sounds a lot, but actually it isn't. Base aim time, well, pretty good, just over 2 seconds to aim that gun. Depression at pants, 5 degrees, but elevation is not too bad at 12 degrees. Thing is, this thing moves quickly. 50 degree, 50 degree, 50 kilometers going forwards, 13 going backwards. Obviously, it doesn't have a turret, but it's able to spin on its own axis at quite an alarming rate. Wargame recommend that this is a front line and a one-on-one -on -one brawl. And as you can see, it's pretty rock solid on the front, not so on the back, the sides, and the top. Although it does have a little bit of space to arm for those skirts. Sticking it into tank compare, well, as you can see, DPM wise, it's not too bad. It's up there, guys, with the 263 and the 183. However, when you then start looking at its alpha damage, it's a little bit low. But don't forget, this has got burst damage, which is pretty big. So, whilst it may not be churning out the massive alpha that the 183 is, it's got a burst. So, it's actually churning out slightly more in real terms. Aim time, as you can see there, it's not as good as the grill or the FV4005 Porter Potty, but hey, it's better than most of them, and that's the thing. Good handling wise, while well, the aiming arc is uh, is pretty pants, depression is pretty pants, as we've already seen. Credit coefficiency, not great, but it's okay. But, look at this, I mean, when you start getting down to the win rates over 90 days, it's leading the pack at 50, oh, just shy, 57%. I mean, that is huge. So, what is it about this armor? Well, there it is there. This is facing up against an E100. And as you can see, front on, good luck with that. Plus, it can side scrape. I mean, this is a beast of a tank. Okay, the lower plate's a bit uh, but stick it all down and you'll have some fun. This is uh, Foxiness Potens of the clan BPS, and here's Flash 155 rolling out uh, a while ago. I've been looking for an excuse to play this uh, replay because basically I've never been that good in the tank. I've always struggled with it and everybody said it's OP and it's you know blah blah blah. Well if you're a relatively good player like Foxy is then yeah it is OP because you yourself are OP. And the thing about the Fosh I found is that it is actually a tricky tank for the average player, funnily enough. But what I always find is most tanks in tier 10, TD or otherwise, are really tricky to play if you're an average player. I mean, that's why it's tier 10. I mean, you know, guys, if, if you don't have the games behind you and you've not learned the competency skills in the tanks before you get to this tank, then you will struggle in these tanks. So whilst it's lovely knowing that it could be, as many classify it, OP, it's only really OP in the right hands. You know, you stick this in a bad player's hands and it's not OP in the slightest. You stick it in a very good player's hands, like Fox's hands here, then yeah, the tank is OP because that's a difference. These types of players know how to play the tank. And you've got to remember that. I mean, Foxy so far has done, what, 3,600 damage. He hasn't taken any kills. He's bound 1,740. And he's been brawling with both a mouse and now an E100. 
not many players are going to be able to do this with the greatest of respect and that's not to sort of cast dispersions on on players it's just to say that just because a tank is labeled OP it is not OP for the majority of the player base and you've got to remember that guys so when you're watching these videos and people are telling you that the tank is OP or it's broken or whatever to an extent yes but that extent is limited to who the player is behind the steering wheel seriously I mean I struggled for a long time in this tank to be perfectly honest with you and one of the things I've been doing is getting to watch decent players play the damn thing and one of the players I've been watching a lot is a friend of mine called the Tingos from the clan W1B now the Ting is a really good player just like Foxy and he likes his Fosh I've also been watching another friend of mine uh, he used to be called his royalty he's now called Firstborn also at the clan W1B I mean that is a fantastic game from Foxy there just what is it 7018 damage 1470 bounces three kills and a well deserved mastery admittedly that was a year ago but when you watch these replays then you start to learn now this is me rolling out in the Fosh yesterday and I am not a, a, a fan of the Fosh I've, I've always struggled in it now we're on New Bay which again is a map I'm not particularly you know impressed with when it comes to using TDs and already we've done 1400 damage and we brawled with a T55A admittedly he came yellowing over the top and straight into my guns but this is the thing I mean he didn't even take a shot at me if you can see there or he may have done but he missed so I've bounced nothing and I've already done 1400 damage and what I learned from the likes of the Tingo's ESA and his royalty is not to be so shy in this tank and to make sure that you use that frontal armor for the maximum effect which means you know don't run away from tanks so much I'm running away here because I'm reloading and I'm gonna try oh somebody kills him so I'm gonna forget about the waffle tractor he's running away down there so I'm gonna try and get this IS-7 and yeah you get a nice 566 into the side of him can we get another one in with the burst damage I think we should be able to quite easily yes the 539 I mean that's good burst damage that's over a thousand damage in one clip this is the thing about the Fosh. And as I said, I've been watching these better players like my friend the Ting and like my friend Firstborn and catching and basically stealing their tips and ideas now to play the damn thing. And as I said, one of the things they do, they play it not overly aggressively, but more aggressive than you would play another type of TD. So now we've done 4,000 damage. We, that was a bad, I, I forgot to switch shells there from HE back to AP, but that's my fault. And now this is where these, these tips that you sort of see, are playing it aggressively, getting up close and personal, come into effect. So I'm trying to play it aggressive. I bounce the T92. The thing is, the frontal arm on this thing is huge. And I've been remembering that. So I'm going to get up close to the T92, face hug him slowly, make sure I can minimize my eyes in. There's an E4 coming in. He's just smacked me. I'm going to smack the 92. Oh, that's a low roll. Now I know the 92 is on a load. He's going to load in a minute. The E4's already smacked me. There we go. Now I know the 92 is definitely loading. I'm going to try and present my ass to him, give him something to shoot at, but then put the E4 between me and the 92 to stop him from shooting which I do I'm now see he bounces now I'm up close again with the E4 take him out now I've just got the 92 to play with I've got 300 hit points get close again he's on a load I'm on my double magazine he fires bounces I take him out 7,000 damage 2,400 bounces and four kills that for me is a fantastic game because I have never really played the flush particularly well. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is don't just look at these replays of these better players doing their fantastic high damage games. Try to evaluate what they are doing to get the most out of the tank. And that's what I've been doing, which is why I was now able to play the Fosh to the maximum. 
effect that it's meant to have. I've watched a lot of games from the likes of The Ting and Firstborn in the Fosh. And whilst it's taken me time to get to understand how to play the tank, the fruits of that labour eventually pay off. So, and, and as you can see there, I was able to do 7,000 damage, block almost 4,500 shots, take four kills and get that mastery. So it's within everybody's capability to play these tanks the way they're meant to be played. As I said, I'm not a super duper unicorn, guys. I am just an average player. And even the likes of me can eventually work out how to play a tank that up until recently, I've not been very competent in. Anyway, I have been Fujit. That has been a quick overview of the Fosh 155. I'd like to say a big thanks to Fox and us potents of the clan BPS for allowing me to play as a replay. By all means, comment, like, and everything below. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please do so. It's a nice thing to do. I'd also like to do a big thank you to my Patreons, who, without their continued support, videos like this would be a lot harder to make. So thank you guys for your support. By all means, if you've got any decent replays, send them to me at fujitsblitz at gmail.com or upload them to my Discord server where I can get them there. And until the next time, guys, stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking, because that is what it's all about, having fun and being happy.